Ancha. So Robert, so we're in Carrickston Church. Can you tell us a bit about the church? Uh, start church off. It's a 13th century edifice. Um, some documents tell us it was related to uh, the monastery at Neath Abbey. Um, it's the sec there are two St. Catug ch churches in Neath, one in Glyneath, and of course this one here, this was the parish church of Cuddingston Juxta, an area um, in, in ancient times that extended from Kremlin to Glyneath, taking in the Dillas Valley. Thus you see many old gravestones here with the uh, addresses which the Victorians and the Georgians before them, of course, like putting addresses on headstones. And many of them indicate the families that lived uh, in those areas that seemingly today would not be connected, of course, with Cadixton or indeed the Vale of Neath. Um, the, 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 after the Reformation in 1536, started in 1536, of course, by Henry the Ed, uh, King Henry VIII, and it was activated by Thomas Cromwell. Uh, Neath Abbey, of course, had a stay of execution for three years until 1539, when it was dissolved. Um, and the last abbot of Neath Abbey became what we argue today as the first vicar of Cadixton. So from, he became from, quite happily, took the king's shilling in many ways mm -hmm. by becoming a Roman Catholic as the abbot of Neath Abbey, a Catholic order, of course, to straight after the Reformation, became an Anglican. Right. Um, but nevertheless, uh, you, you know, you learn m m much more about certainly the graves, the individual graves in this particular cemetery. Uh, if you come on one of the tours, organized by Martin Griffiths of the Antiquarian Society. Martin is very knowledgeable about everything that's in this cemetery, really, and I urge you to attend one of his walks here. They are fantastic. Um, the, 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 the most notorious graveyard, of course, is the murder stone. And of course, now this is something that has always captured me uh, every time so, since I've seen it since, since a young age. And I know that many schools have done um, a lot of work around this stone because there's, there's quite a few, I think, in Wales, there? there's a few, yeah. three or four. Yeah, certainly it's not unique. Um, the, the nearest one to us is in um, Nebo Chapel in Valindre in Swansea. Um, that, again, the author of this epitaph was Elijah Waring, a Neath Quaker and antiquarian, and, and he wrote extensively, and he was very friendly with Yolo Morganug, um, uh, an, another historian, uh, although he, 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 to, to treat Yolo's scripts with caution. He could make things up to fit the script, so to speak. <laughs> right, OK. But at the same time, he was the author of the one in Nebo Chapel as well. And I'll come back to that particular one in Nebo in a second. Okay. But if you like, to, what I'd like to do, I'd like to read the stone. Can I, a couple of people ask me to read the stone? Yeah. And then we'll go into a bit more detail. Is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So at the top, it says, 1823, to record murder. This stone was erected over the body of Margaret Williams, aged 26, a native of Carmarthenshire, living in service in this parish, who was found dead with marks of violence upon her person in a ditch on the marsh below this churchyard on the morning of Sunday the 14th of July 1822. Although the savage murderer escaped uh, sorry a season a season for a season oh, do you read the rest I can't, I yeah, can't read Make the savage it. murderer escaped for a season the detection of man Yet, God hath set his mark upon him, either for time or eternity, and the cry of blood will surely pursue him to certain and terrible righteousness, to, to, a, to a certain and terrible but righteous judgment. Wow. And it's, a very, it's a very unusual stone, isn't it? Now, so what's the story behind it? Is this something that the family... No, no. The, 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 my information mostly comes from a lady called Gertie Hughes. G 
Gertie died some years ago, way into her 90s, and she was a school teacher in Caddickston, a lovely, lovely lady, an unmarried lady, and she used to regale me uh, from the 1960s on with the stories of particularly Caddickston, but also of Neath. And her telling of this tale, and it's one I carry forward, was that uh, Margaret Williams, of course, presented herself at the hiring fair in High Street in Neath and uh, was taken on as a servant girl uh, by the family of Gethlia Farm, which is just up on the mountain beyond the golf club. Uh, again, the story is, and particularly from Gertie, that the son of the farm got her pregnant and uh, part of her job was driving the cows down from the farm to the marsh and in the evening going again to fetch them to bring them home. Uh, bear in mind the marsh below here, no canal, no railway, of course no road, just the river and the estuary and the marshland. And there they found her body in a ditch. She was found to be pregnant. He was never brought to justice and again the story is that he emigrated rather quickly to North America mm -hmm. and uh, the story has many tellings and I've heard variations of that theme. You know, Gertie used to dramatise it to a certain extent by t saying that people heard him galloping out of the village early one morning heading for the docks. She didn't say which docks, but I assume it was Swansea. But nevertheless, um, the story persisted. And she would have it that the people of Caddickston were incensed about this cruel event. And they paid Elijah Waring, a neath antiquarian, to pen this epitaph which is damning, of course. Yeah, absolutely. It really is damning. Uh, Margaret Williams, poor thing, never saw Carmarthenshire again. Um, and at age 26, she, she, we don't quite know how long she would have been working or living in this area. But nevertheless, the people of Cardiston clearly rose to the challenge that her memory would never, ever be forgotten. And it isn't. You know, this this is to the area just to view this. And, and the most notable one was about 10, 15 years ago now, I had a phone call from Neath Council's tourism department. Doesn't exist now. No, unfortunately. Cuts, cuts, cuts. Yeah. <laughs> Would I meet the family from coming or touring South Wales from North America? And I thought nothing of this. And I met them on the railway station and we had a taxi around town, the different locations they wanted to see and the council paid for the taxi in fairness. And one of the places they wanted to come to was Gethlia Farm. Okay. I started to, you know, think, how odd, why Gethlia? But at the time I knew the farmer very, very well and he made us welcome, but they wanted to come here. And the, the vicar at the time allowed us into the church and they spent an hour in there wandering about. And coming out, they hadn't made reference to this and the taxi was parked there. And I stopped, you might be interested in this, said I. And they were. And they read it. And it was a little bit clearer then, a bit of lichen on it now and one thing or another and a few cracks. But nevertheless, they were called Llewellyn. The family that I was taking around, but of course the name would have changed over the years. And they were fascinated and they informed me when they read it, because they had told me previously their ancestors were from this parish, Caddickston, the village of Caddickston, not Caddickston Juxta. Yeah. And they knew that. And they said, Oh, 1822. Well, that's when our great, 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 great grandfather emigrated from this area. Right. And I thought, gosh, why Gethlia then? And did he come from Gethlia? You know, the story hangs in the air. Yeah. And, 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 and I, I wish Gertie was alive for me to have told her that I'd met these people. But I waved them away on the railway station and didn't enlighten them 
about the thoughts I was having. No, so, so effectively then that it was an ancestor of theirs um, that they didn't know about that they'd actually come to, to look uh, at this stone. Clearly, I, because why get Leah? And they, yeah. they, they wanted to see other things like Tabo Chapel. Uh, they wanted to see my Sahav um, in Neath, another old chapel, of course, and different things around the area. Um, they were fascinated by it. You know, Cardiston School, which was gone by then, of course, you know, it had been knocked down, but nevertheless, the old Cardiston School, now next, they used to be next to the church. But nevertheless, you know, it was interesting, and I pondered, and still ponder, about um, the story, really. And I, I did carry the story in the book Haunted Neath, Although that aspect wasn't ghosty, no. you know, you, you like to throw in anecdotes, anecdotes about the strange happenings in the town. And this is one. And, you know, there's no retribution in respect of this particular monument here. Uh, Margaret Williams is long gone. She's long asleep. She's happy with God, we and one hopes, and a unborn baby. Nevertheless, the one which was erected in Neighbour Chapel in Valindra, only a few years after this, still has retribution handed down to it. In so much as, and you're talking about a closed community in Velindra, yeah. it's a tiny village in the foothills of Manithaguayar and um, North, North Gower. And whenever there's a wedding in that village with relatives of the person that they believe murdered the person, the victim, under the stone in that chapel. And no one knows how it happens, and no one knows who's responsible for it. And it's happened about half a dozen times, if not more. And Dorian Williams, the late Dorian Williams, a good counsellor friend of mine in Swansea, related this story to me some years ago, that on the morning of the wedding, a red cross appears on the chapel door of Nebor. Painted, it doesn't yeah. just appear, it's been painted overnight by some unknown and unseen person. And to this day, that ghost follows the family name of the murderer. Wow. Although the murderer's name is long lost probably to history, yeah. only known to those people there. We haven't got that sort of story here. No. The vicar wouldn't tolerate you painting his door, and he's right not. No, no, quite right. Wherever you are, because he's um, an absolutely, it's, it's, it's a beautiful it's gone. church. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know. A couple of years ago, we took some photo photographs of the church, and we had such a, a, a large response. So people were being married here and funerals. Yes. It, it's a. Uh, it's an absolutely stunning church. It and is. on that note, for anybody local, I know no, we are in South Wales and lots of people watch that are not from South Wales, but if you are local, uh, the, the church are over volunteers to help uh, tender the, the graveyard to, to clear up some of the brambles and help with the weeds. So if you have got some spare time, send me a message and I'll send you a contact number um, to, to, to get in touch. You know? Yeah, but you know, the, 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 this cemetery is absolutely fantastic. I arrived here an hour before you just meandering around, you know, and I've been to so many funerals here. And one of the first funerals I attended here, and it, this is a ghostly story, was of a young man called Michael Williams, uh, by Michael Davis, and he was from Longford, and he was a biologist, and he had a good job that took him all over the world with the oil companies. And Mike died of cancer when he was about 36, born and bred in Neath, went to Neath Grammar School, a Longford boy. His father got me one of my first jobs in the metal box after I finished in the racing industry. And uh, Mike died, 36. And um, we came to the funeral. And he lived in Ascot in Berkshire. And of course his wife would have been bereft. Pat, her name was, and still is. And many members of the family still live in the Neath area, and if they, uh, if they wanted this, they'll recognise it. They won't recognise this little aspect, though, maybe not. Mary Davis, a very close friend of my mother, they're both dead now, and Mary, Mary Davis was Michael's mother, and she had five or six children. And Pat was bereft after losing Michael at such a young age. They had a couple of children. She continued to live in Berkshire, in Ascot, and was struggling to get over the loss of Mike. And one day a friend of hers said, we go for a weekend to Brighton. And they went along the lanes, the antiquated part of Brighton where there's yeah. bookshops and antique, antique shops. 
and they were in a, in a, in a, must have been a bookshop, and they were mal went in through a box of postcards. And suddenly Pat picked the postcard up of Langatog Church, wow. Caddickston Neat. How could that happen? Yeah, wow. And she looked at it and she started to cry. But from then on, she thought, is this a sign from Mike, I'm all right. Why Langatog Church? There were no other Welsh cards in the pile and there yeah. were hundreds there. Wow. Strange, strange story. Yeah, and I went down and saw his grave after, you know, just in the, earlier on. And, uh, you know, it was just, just a nod to him for our past. Um, but uh, all related to this cemetery, and, but none more so, of course, than this particular murder stone. There are five or six in Wales. This is the best kept. Um, the one in Nebor in Villindra, you can't read anymore. It's worn away. Mm. But nevertheless, um, I don't know the reason. Martin may know the reason, Martin Griffiths, for the cross. You made reference to it earlier. For the, not the cross, I'm sorry, the, in, in, uh, the in, inserted stone, yeah, yeah. Why that is so, I don't know. As I say, you had the theory that you had been told there was a dagger in there. There was originally, um, I was told, that there was originally a blade of, of a knife in yeah. there, um, which was subsequently stolen some years later, but, uh, and the square was a replacement of that. Yeah. So, um, I guess we, we'll, we'll try and find out. M Martin may know truth. that. When I, if next I bump into him, I'll, I'll ask him. Because it's very peculiar, I don't know. isn't it? It's yes, very peculiar it is. to it's have It's very that. tidy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I've never heard that before. And, you know, the, 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 one of the first times I ever seen this was about 12, when yeah. Cl Clive Trot took me around here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the late, yeah. much lamented Clive Trot. But nevertheless, you know, it's a nice, it's an interesting aspect of Neath's history. You know, uh, to, to me, who writes a lot about the town and one thing and another, it's almost a cliche. You know, Rhys Griffith, Rhys David, Rhys Phillips in his history of the Neath only gives it a passing mention, which yeah. surprises me. Yeah. But most people reference it and stop to talk and write about it. Yeah, definitely. It is interesting, you know. Yeah. Um, I often talk about it, the, the, the murder store we call it in Carrickston. Yeah. Um, and the canal is just behind you, we have a canal system, and the very quaint bridge. And, and over the years, we've come to call it the Margaret Williams Bridge because, of course, it leads. Right, right. Uh, although the canal wasn't there during do, her no. murder, uh, it leads, leads to the churchyard. So we've kind of. We've it came through, it came through not there. long after mine, two or yeah. three years. Yeah, I think it's like 36, was it? Well, 1823, no, 1823, 1825, the canal's date is. Right. But, you know. It, so two Not or three years after this, it would have been up and running. Great. But nevertheless, it wasn't there then. Perfect. Well, thank you, Rob, for talking about this stone. Now, tomorrow, no, sorry, Thursday, you've got um, a, a walk, a ghost talk in uh, Victoria Gardens. Yeah, the walk. We're walking through town, um, six o'clock from Victoria Gardens, um, talking about the, the, on the route we take, you know, and its history and the spooky stories that I've collected from there. So, you know, the, we've done lots of them. My worry is often that most people have been on them because yeah. Neath isn't a huge place. But nevertheless, you know, these stories continue to surface. Yeah. And we, 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 we mention those as well as we walk along. But that's yeah. at six o'clock. Great. So six o'clock, Victoria Gardens on Thursday. Uh, try and be there. It's three pound adult and uh, nothing for children. Mm. Uh, they're always well turned out, uh, and you get a lot of repeat. People oh, come yes, back on the same do. walk, do yeah, you, Joe? So, yeah. well, we haven't um, done them this summer, um, so this is the first one now, really, since, I think, April. Yeah, I can't remember. Great. April we went to uh, Shua Shire, yeah. but thereabouts. Yeah. And to keep up to date on, on anything that Rob's doing in the local area, as far as history is concerned, uh, you can go to Memories of Neath, Old and New. That's a great page, local... Um, history and lots of photos and lots of good uh, feeling uh, stories so thank you very much for watching I don't know if there's any questions coming through um, maybe we'll have a little look if there's any questions now let's have a look let's have a look okay Robert do you want to come and <laughs> come and have a look um, okay we're going to come to questions now thanks for, for watching I hope you enjoyed that it's uh, it's something that has always interested me since, since, uh, since young, really. Um, 
How interesting. Uh, I went on a ghost walk run by Robert King. It was amazing. I would recommend one. Uh, and this is from Breaker Dodds. I'm getting a still photo, not a video. Okay, sorry, a bit of a technical issue there. Um, this fascinates me. Yeah, so nothing really question is coming up. Just kind of lots of comments. Lots of comments people have enjoyed. Yeah, perfect. So I'm glad you've all enjoyed. And um, mention, so mention Martin's walks again, just to. Uh, so do, you, do you know when Martin's got? No, I don't. But look out for them. Okay. You know, um, they are well. They they they, <laughs> they extensively go through this cemetery with him. Yeah. Brilliant. Perfect. So perhaps we'll organise that. Because if you speak to Martin, and perhaps yeah, we could we could arrange it's, something. It's, the more these things happen, the more tension we will continually bring to. And that's what we've got to do. We've got, to, we, we've got to keep these stories alive. We've got to, we've got to keep history alive. We've got to pass it on to the next generation. Um, I am, I class myself as a progression, as a, as a prog uh, progressive, but um, I'll always do, uh, I'm a traditionalist as well. So we have got to pass these stories on and uh, for the future generations. And so we will see you uh, on Thursday, possibly, at Victoria Gardens. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Uh, lots of love, and we'll see you all soon. Take care, everyone.